Hi folks, chapter 25. Let's go through the series three upgrade, uh, which I mentioned in the beginning of chapter 24, but decided to make it a separate chapter. And so I've got um, the jibs adjusted, and so just cracked open the instructions, which start off with removing the covers on the three axis um, for the couplers. You can see the X here. You can barely see the uh, Z up there in the corner. Um, the, now, for all of you guys that have the power draw bar, the Z axis motor coupling cover is now the piece of sheet metal that holds the power draw bar um, air manifold, um, but that's okay. And then the Y axis guy, which is behind the mill, and for those of you like me who have the mill relatively close to a wall, uh, enjoy. Hope you're thin. Um, we'll see how uh, much of a pain that becomes. And uh, so I'm just going to go over the same way I did with the jibs, which is I'm going to run with this on my own, but hop back onto video as I see um, tips or tricks or things that weren't necessarily intuitive from the uh, ra rather thorough and photographic um, instruction manual from Tormach. All right, first thing I noticed is that you need to block um, the Z-axis up on a piece of wood so that it doesn't fall when you uh, detach the motor. And to do that, you obviously don't want any tools in there, nor do you even want the um, TTS R8 collet, which protrudes through the spindle nose. So I'm gonna take that out, which means I'm gonna take the whole draw bar assembly out um, and block it up. I also think I've got excuse me, the table in a good position, which is basically all the way forward and all the way left near those limit switches. While I'm at it, might as well share what my uh, uh, RA TTS call it looks like. I just took this out of the mill. It has not been out since I installed the um, power drawbar probably in November of last year, so that's about 10 months, and I've probably done a few thousand, um, if not more, tool changes on it. Um, you know, it needs to be clean. Cleaning it, um, if you read the TTS white paper, um, talks a lot about its holding power having to do with how clean it is, and um, it's got some grime on it. It is a wear item, meaning eventually you buy a new one of these. I'm not sure if I'm close to that or not. Um, I'll be sure to chime in on this video or later videos if I come to that conclusion. <clears throat> I jogged down the Z-axis to where this block you know, barely moves. Um, it's certainly not going to let the z-axis drop any material amount. Um, the next instruction on the sheet is to then start de um, unscrewing the uh, coupler socket head cap screws, which is what's going to let this thing fall. And the step after that is to start messing with the motors themselves and the conduits on them, which I'm guessing that's the point at which you definitely don't want the power on or even connected. So I am it, the manual, the instruction guy's not exactly clear on that, but. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, unplug the, turn the machine off and then unplug it from the wall. All right, first mistake. Um, the next step is to loosen the motor couplers, and I just realized that um, starting with the Z axis, the coupler, the socket head cap screws on the coupler, for instance, the ones that you can see if I zoom in here, are facing away from me right now. So I've got to jog each axis so that I can actually see the coupler screws to get at them. All right, quick update. I've got the Z-axis stepper motor off. I got the back panel off the motor. Um, the instruction dialogues show a uh, terminal block set. I've actually got crimped on uh, twist connectors here. Um, at first I thought, hmm, but then I realized, wait, it doesn't actually matter because what you're doing is I'll cut these in a second and then the only reason you care about the existing wires that run through the conduit all the way back to the control cabinet is because you want to use those wires to pull your new wires through. In other words, these wires um, that you see here are eventually junked, so you use them only as a cable puller. Um, the, meaning, in other words, the whole length of the new stepper motor here will actually go through and these will actually plug directly into the new driver in the cabinet versus um, connecting to these again. Motor is free as you can see here and I also removed the old um, conduit cap screw 
which I think uh, I'll replace here in a second with um, the one on the new motor here. So this guy can go bye-bye for now, and what I will do is use these wires to tie off to the new wires to pull through the cabinet. All right, I've got the two tied together, or excuse me, taped together. If you haven't pulled uh, wires before but like this, make sure you use enough tape so that it doesn't slip. That's a pain if it does. And also, um, you want to make sure it's pretty smooth that if, you, if there's any snags or turns or corners that you can uh, you can uh, get it, navigate the wire through by pulling. Um, you also want to make sure it's not so thick though that it doesn't fit through any of the um, holes. I left this piece um, on, which came out of the socket here on the left side just because it was a little bit tight on the fit and, it, and it'll work fine over there. And then finally, just make sure you don't have any kinks in your wire and then let's go find out where this is in the cabinet to pull it through. So the uh, x-axis cables are one of the three coming through here. I tugged on one and it looks like I got it right the first time and it has got uh, four cables going up and a green one that's coming over here. So what I'm going to do, I want to get this green one unscrewed. It looks like it's on some sort of a ground bar or a bus bar. In fact, actually, I know that's a ground bar because I unscrewed it on the uh, motor as well. So I, I'm not, too, you know, I could take a picture of that if I wanted to document it to ever redo it, but I'm comfortable with what that is. So I'm going to unscrew that, and then I'm going to leave the top ones plugged in, um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the cable through now. All right, I'm not quite through yet, but I pulled the wire some and then uh, pushed it on the, um, on the, um, x-axis side and then I pulled a little bit more here and then it started to pull through pretty easy. Um, you just always want to be careful to make sure um, you don't have a snag anywhere that cuts the wire or um, strips the um, skin off of it and uh, you also want to make sure when you're pulling through that it doesn't form a kink um, which you know it can be tough to do this because you're pulling with a fair amount of resistance anyway so I'm going to finish pulling this through and be right back. All right, the old uh, x-axis wire harness is out. Um, I unplugged this piece, this green terminal block uh, plug from the driver, and then I unscrewed the four wires here. These were connected to the wire harness, and then these two connect to um, what are fuses, so that's clearly a power source, and they're, these on the X are labeled 302, 303, and as the instructions say, um, you, you remove these wires from the block, I'm guessing these are going to get plugged back in in a minute, so I will leave them uh, intact other than just unscrewing and getting this terminal block out of here. It's uh, a little bit unclear. It says unplug power and control cables from the old driver and remove the driver. So the only other cable is this guy. I labeled it X for the X-axis just because there's uh, no other clear way to ID which is which, and I'm now going to take this out. Fun fact of the day, uh, the two screws that hold in the separate driver were really short. It took me about two turns before they were out. Um, dropping one of these things in the electrical cabinet can play be a fun game of hide and seek, so uh, be careful when you uh, unscrew these. And on that note, ends up the panel uh, bracket is slightly thicker on the new guys, and the existing screws are not actually um, long enough to... Uh, thread into the, the machine panel. So um, I got lucky. These are M, appear to be M4 by 10 threads. I have some extra socket head cap screws um, with sufficient thread length on them. So I'll just swap those out. Um, but just a heads up, if you're planning on doing this, you may think about having some extra M4 by 10 metric screws around. Okay, screwed the driver into the panel, put the ribbon cable just right back on, and then um, hooked up the five wires to the terminal block. The, uh, you know, you just follow the instructions. The important thing they emphasize so you don't blow the driver is the um, ground versus the uh, positive voltage wires, which is in the manual. And then um, the three uh, stepper motor, or yeah, I guess they're still steppers. And I'll tidy these up later. I think it probably makes sense to do what I did, which is to complete one um, whole driver. That way you don't have three different motor wires or sets of motor wires coming through where you're a little bit easier to make a mistake as to which uh, wire goes to which axis. So the x-axis is effectively all done. I also have got the uh, 
motor back on. Actually, you can't see it from there, but motor screwed on, coupler's tightened up, so moving on to the Z and the Y. I'm not going to cover these except for if I find any little tips and tricks um, because it should be much of the same stuff. All right, folks, here is probably the single best tip or trick I've ever had in my hundred and what some five some CNC videos. If you want to add about an hour to this project and involving removing your side panel of your deluxe stand and ruining that wonderful double lined silicone job, all you need to do when you remove the Z axis stepper is make sure both the coupling socket head gap screws are disconnected. That way when you pull the stepper off, the coupling will come off too and manage to find its way down the hole that's just big enough to fit it and fall all the way down your z-axis column and land somewhere in the between the base and the stand in a pile of swarf and what you'll end up doing is just what I did which is remove the side of your stand and you know because I'm too lazy to remove the whole left side bend that back panel and then use you know, the third hand you don't have, a couple flashlights, a couple of magnets on sticks, and get your hair and head dirty and a bunch of swarf while you go fishing. An hour later, you will probably, if you're lucky, come up with this just to start off over again. So don't do that. All right, Tormach didn't say anything about uh, the Z-axis stepper on how to separate the wires from it. Um, I assumed that you were supposed to, so I first I took off the brake. That clearly wasn't it. Um, I didn't know. I'd never opened it before. And then I unscrewed the um, screws on the face of the motor that protrude all the way through and took off the back. I don't think that was it either. That ended up actually removing part of the motor. I have no idea whether that did any permanent damage. Um, it shouldn't matter since I, I can't really put this thing, I mean, I'm not putting it back on anyways, but um, looks like there's no extra slack there, so I guess what you do is just cut these um, off right here if, uh, and, and then um, tie off on your new ones. Okay, coming down home stretch, got the Z-axis driver in. The two black uh, cords, they provide some uh, female crimp ends. I just want to show you, we do some work for uh, wire harnesses, so I have a tool here that's correctly designed for it, but all it really does is uh, squash this end together like so. So pretty easy to improvise. Another tool, and I just want to show you that. The two bl um, black cables that we just crimped with the um, blue ends get plugged into the DC bus board, which is part number 30661. Um, all the instructions say is Connect these um, to the BRK plus and minus connections. Polarity is not important. So um, that's fine. I, I get the instructions and I can see the BRK plus and minus. Um, it's a little bit worrisome just because, you know, normally it, they say polarity is not important, but uh, I got to tell you, um, when you're someone like me and you're dealing with this kind of equipment, it'd be reassuring to see a picture or something just confirming I'm not doing something really um, stupid here because, you know, it's sort of a triple red flag when someone tells you um, positive and negatives and don't matter type of thing. But anyways, I'm going to plug these in and wrap up the cabinet. A correction here on the two brake wires. As I was cleaning up the wires, I realized I had the old brake wires left in the column. And I pulled them out and I traced them back to the DC bus board where I thought I had plugged it in correctly. And sure enough, I think I was wrong, but frankly it's a little bit... Uh, uncertain. There's a brake relay plus tab here and then there's a tab here which when I put a mirror on it I can see from the other side I think it says brake and that's the two I believe where I pulled uh, the old brake ones off of so in some respects that's pretty logical replace the old ones with the new ones but I gotta say that's frustrating to not feel 100% certain and to not be able to read the text and such but that's what I'm gonna go with. All right, if you can get all those wires back in the uh, conduit runner in, with, in, you know, without any trouble, you're a better man than I. I used a bunch of uh, little zip ties, and you know, I like making it neat, and if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right now. So actually, it didn't take that long once I had the zip ties in there, um, and I will end up tucking the rest of that. I'll zip tie the rest of that and then tuck a lot of it back into the Z-axis column, and I should be done with the cabinet. Um, obviously, you just want to check 
um, the polarity on the two blue wires for each of the drivers and then I just give a quick tug on each of the red, green, and yellow to make sure they are in there nice and good. Last two things to check, uh, make sure the dip switches are in the correct positions for, uh, per the instruction manual. And then uh, I had a problem where one of my terminal blocks had pulled out a little bit from when I was tucking the wires into the panel. So just make sure um, everything's in there good. The next step is to boot up the computer and install the CD file. So I am going to do that uh, and take it from there. All right, it is uh, way too late on a Saturday night to keep working uh, in, in all seriousness. Um, I'm tired right now and nothing good comes of uh, doing stuff like this when you're exhausted. Um, it took a lot longer. Um, hopefully for anyone else watching this video doing this, you'll learn a lot from some of my mistakes. Um, and look, I took longer time because I was videotaping. Um, I did the jib adjustment, all that good stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I would say, if, you know, it depends on where, if your mill's next to a wall, it's going to take a little bit longer. But, you know, somewhere between three and five hours to really go through the jib adjustment, everything else. But uh, just turned it on, no problems. And I got to say, this is pretty cool. You can see uh, the speed of the Z is unbelievable. It's incredible. Um, so, you know, this, they sound a lot different, which, you know, sound, you know, maybe there's a coolness factor, but uh, you're supposed to be more accurate. I'm not going to get into that tonight. Uh, I'm psyched that it works, and uh, I got my mill back. So, uh, next app chapter, I'll talk about uh, the improvements from it. Thanks, everybody.